Hi guys, this is Kiri with Healthfully Rooted Home and today I'm gonna to give you my very best tips for meal planning on a budget. So you guys know I'm all about meal planning here. Uh, I actually sell my own six month meal plans that I make, but today I wanna to tell you how you can specifically meal plan while working within a budget. Whatever your budget may be, these tips will help you to stretch that dollar a little further because grocery prices right now are insane. <laughs> so let's get right into these tips. Okay, my first tip comes from my competitive nature. And this is kind of like competing with myself, I guess, but it's to have a no spend month or week or two weeks or whatever. You designate the length of time and then you say that is going to be a no spend month, let's say. And this is kind of fun because you have to get really creative with everything that you have in your freezer and your fridge and your pantry. And sometimes there's gonna be some really weird meals that you make out of this, but sometimes you can find some real winners of meals that you wouldn't have thought of before. Regardless, you aren't spending any money. Now, there you can give yourself some certain stipulations. So you can say, you know, I'm not gonna spend any money other than fresh produce. You know, that you can you decide the rules, but um, basically just having a no spend length of time, you can really stretch your dollar. The next one, this is a very obvious one, but each week go through your fridge and make meals out of what you already have. So in the meal plans that I sell, I leave several days throughout the week of leeway where you can either use up leftovers that you have or, you know, make a special meal or go out to eat. Um, but this is often the time where I go through our fridge and I just clean it out. And I, we call it a hodgepodge night where we just have a hodgepodge of all the leftovers we have or any of the weird things that we need to get rid of. So go through your fridge and see what you can make with what you have. Now, you could do this, you know, at the end of the week, so like your last few days of the week, but you could even do this for, you know, a full week. I think you'd be surprised how infrequently you actually have to go to the store if you just use up what's in your fridge. Okay, my next tip is to buy your staples in bulk. So don't buy weird things in bulk, right? So if you go to the store and you see something that looks interesting to you and that your family might like, don't stock up on that because you don't know if your family actually likes it or if you tire of it really quickly. Um, but things that your family uses on a daily basis, you know, butter, um, rice, flour, whatever it is that your family uses frequently, if you see those items on sale, stock up on those. But if you see something that might look good that's on sale and you're just stocking up because it's on sale but you don't actually know if you like it, don't do that. My next meal planning on a budget tip is to be more flexible with your meal plan. So let's say you have a meal plan that you really like to stick to, um, or let's say you have themed nights that you really like to stick to, Taco Tuesday, Soupy Sunday, things like that. If you're meal planning on a budget, you might need to stray away from that quite a bit so that you can you know, fit within your budget or use up what you already have. So the tip is to just get outside of that box that you have in your head of what your week should look like or what your meals should look like and be more flexible. That way you can take advantage of maybe doing a no spend a month or using up some stuff that you have in your fridge that you need to get rid of. My next meal planning on a budget tip is to use similar ingredients for your meals each week, such as a chicken pot pie one night and chicken soup the next night, or you know a couple nights later, or a taco skillet one night with tacos or enchiladas another night. You're using similar ingredients for those meals 
And first of all, the ingredients that you have aren't gonna go to waste, right? You're not gonna throw away half a bunch of cilantro or your leftover beans that you have or something because you can just use it for the next meal that has those similar ingredients. My next tip is to stretch your meat. Now I have a couple different ways of doing this. Uh, one is to buy whole chickens. This is revolutionary, you guys. If you don't buy whole chickens, I highly recommend you do. You are going to save so much money, especially if you make homemade bone broth from the uh, bones from that chicken. So buy a whole chicken and use that meat from the chicken for your chicken throughout the week. Throw it into pot pies, throw it into enchiladas. However you use chicken, use the meat from a whole chicken. Then use the carcass from that chicken, make your homemade bone broth. You're really stretching your dollar with that. And then my next tip is for something like ground beef. So we eat a lot of ground beef in this house because it's easy and it doesn't take a long time to defrost. So we use a lot of ground beef. <laughs> but what I would recommend is if you get your beef from a butcher, which is another tip, find a local source for beef near you and buy directly from the source. You're gonna save some money there. But if you do that, they're gonna send your beef to a butcher and the butcher is gonna ask you questions about how you want that meat prepared. Um, they're gonna ask you what cuts of meat you want. They're gonna ask you uh, how you want it packaged. You know, one pound packs, one and a half pound packs, two pound packs. I always do one and a half pound packs. Now this number might look different for you depending on the size of your family, but I do one and a half pound packs because I have found that if I do just one pound of ground beef for my family, it's not enough for that meal and then lunch the next day. But if I do two pounds of ground beef, it's too much. And there's always a little bit that goes to waste. I'm not talking, you know, a huge amount, but there's a little bit, enough to make it hurt a little bit. And usually I find ways to use it, but it's such a small amount that it's never enough for an entire meal. And so anyways, my solution to that was just having them package my beef in one and a half pound packs. Now that's sometimes not enough, uh, but just barely. And I have found ways that kind of forces me to stretch the meat. So now where I would have maybe not included beans in that dish, now I'll include some beans um, just to give ourselves some more filler and some more protein to make up for that beef. But if you can buy your meat from a local source, um, and then have the butcher package the beef in one and a half pound packs. That may look different to you. Like let's say you have a large family and you need two and a half pound packs. Whatever is going to force you to stretch your meat a little more than you already do, do that. This video is sponsored by my own six month meal plans. These meal plans are perfect for working parents, stay at home moms, or just generally people who are busy or in a dinner rut and want new mealtime inspiration. I have a spring and summer and a fall and winter six month meal plan. And each meal plan has 50 to 60 unique recipes so you're not ever gonna get bored of eating the same thing. They are laid out in a rotational format so you don't have to spend any time meal planning for six whole months. I include grocery lists, supplies lists, everything you need for six months worth of meals. Most of the meals in these meal plans can be prepared in about 30 minutes flat and are perfect for people who like to cook from scratch meals or even just semi-homemade meals. I have options for from scratch or in a pinch. I call for healthy, nutrient-dense, and seasonal flavors in each of the recipes and each of the meal plans so you can feel good about feeding your family healthy, nutrient-dense foods. And each meal is totally customizable 
based on dietary preferences or family size. All the recipes are organized by week, with each week giving about four unique recipes. I designed these meals so that you can make enough to have leftovers for lunch the next day. So you cook once, eat twice. I also include in these meal plans a list of easy button meal ideas, which are meals that you can whip up in about five to 10 minutes flat. And each recipe includes a box with quick recipe info telling you exactly what you need to know for the recipe, such as how long it's gonna take to cook, what you need to do to prepare for that recipe the night before. For example, if you have to defrost meat, I put that in that little section. So if you wanna feed your family healthy and wholesome meals every night without having to meal plan for six months, check the description box below to check out my six month meal plan. Next tip is to have easy meals on hand or quick finishers to a meal. So an example of this would be to keep some canned soup on hand. Uh, not only is it just a super easy meal, but let's say all you have are like pantry staples, and but you can make a loaf of sourdough bread. Perfect, your meal could be a loaf of sourdough bread and some canned soup that you have in your pantry and you don't have to make a trip out to the store, you don't have to go out to eat because you do have what you need right there. Another example of a quick finisher is always having pasta noodles on hand because if you have pasta noodles on hand and marinara sauce, you don't even have to put meat in that really. You could just do pasta, marinara sauce, and then maybe a vegetable and you're good to go. Um, so just have easy, quick finishers on hand. That leads me into my next tip, which is to learn how to bake your own bread. I have tons of content on here about sourdough, how to start a sourdough starter, my no need sourdough loaf, lots of sourdough content on here. But if you know how to make your own bread, all you need is flour, salt, and water. And you have a beautiful artisan loaf of bread that you can use as a quick finisher to, you know, a ton of different meals. The simplest of meals turn into like the most delicious, glorious meal because of that freshly baked loaf of bread that all you needed were pantry staples for. That leads me into my next tip, which is to always have pantry staples on hand. So I think I kind of alluded to this earlier, but it's so important. If you have a fully stocked pantry, which I have tons of videos on my pantry, keeping a fully stocked pantry, all of that. But if you have a fully stocked pantry full of healthy ingredients, uh, not snack foods, but healthy ingredients, I'm talking marinara sauce, beans, rice, quinoa, you know, pasta noodles, things like that, that you could throw a quick meal together with, then you could go a long time without having to go to the store. My very last meal planning on a budget tip is to make double batches of things. So the whole point of this, most of these tips all revolve around not having to go to the grocery store very often. And so if you can have a freezer stocked with soup or a casserole that you made in advance, then that's gonna prevent you from having to go to the store every single week or, you know, God forbid, multiple times a week because you have what you need on hand already. So the whole idea of meal planning on a budget is going to the store less. And so whenever you can, I highly recommend making a double batch of something, let's say you're making um, a soup or a chicken pot pie, make a double batch of it so that you can just pull it out of the freezer, have an easy meal one night, and also you don't have to go to the store. So it's a great backup plan. All right, you guys, thank you so much for watching this video. These are my meal planning on a budget tips. If you have any more tips for meal planning on a budget, put them in the comments below. I am always looking for meal planning tips. And thank you so much for watching.